A deep dive into hepatitis C. Maybe you've heard about hepatitis disease in your lifetime, and maybe not. After this video, we hope that you walk away with more knowledge about hepatitis C. So what is hepatitis C? Hepatitis C, also known as HCV, is a liver infection caused by the hepatitis C virus. The word hepatitis means the inflammation of the liver, where hepat is the prefix that means liver and itis is a suffix that indicates inflammation. The virus can be transmitted through blood or bodily fluids. This includes sharing drug injection needles or syringes that are infected with blood that contains hepatitis C virus. Another method of transmission could be through unprotected sex with an individual who is infected with hepatitis C. This is most common between men who have sex with men. This is because sexual intercourse between two men most often happens anally and the potential to exposure of blood is relatively high compared to vaginal intercourse. Other methods include unsterile tattoo or piercing needles, direct contact with infected blood, or from a mother to her baby. Now that you know a little bit more about what hepatitis C is and how it's transmitted, let's go into the nitty-gritty details of its molecular mechanisms. First, let's talk about the liver which is an essential organ. It is responsible for filtering out toxins in your bloodstream, removing dead red blood cells, and removing bacteria. Liver cells also form clotting factors to help stop bleeding and create bile, which is later used by other organs to digest fats from the foods you eat. Now, let's talk about how hepatitis C affects the liver. Once you become infected and the hepatitis C virus is in your bloodstream, the virus enters your liver and binds to specific receptors on your liver cells through a process called endocytosis. Then. The membrane that envelops the genetic material of the virus, or RNA, breaks down and releases the viral RNA into the liver cell. The viral RNA then uses the liver cell's replication machinery, including ribosomes, to make its proteins. These proteins will be used by the virus for structure or for creating the replication complex. The replication complex, which is part of the liver cell's endoplasmic reticulum, is what helps the virus to make more copies of its genetic information. Finally, the liver cell's Golgi apparatus helps to package the new viral particles that will be released to the outside of the cell or to adjacent liver cells so it will eventually infect them. In simple terms, the molecular mechanism of an individual getting infected by hepatitis C virus is through the process of receptor binding and endocytosis. In response to the virus, your body sends signals to your immune system to help fight off the viral infection. When these immune cells are recruited, they attack the virus, but they also attack the liver cells that are infected, which leads to their inflammation and eventually their death. This is where the disease gets its name from. Over time, scar tissue forms over the dead liver cells, which severely impacts your liver's function. Normally, your immune system should be able to kill all of the viral particles and you can overcome the infection. However, if by six months, your immune system is unable to rid your body of all of the virus particles, you now have chronic hepatitis C infection. About 70% of hepatitis C infections become chronic. When this happens, you will have lots of scarring on your liver, which can lead to other conditions like cirrhosis, where your liver can eventually shrink and harden over time, causing major health problems. Liver cancer is also a major concern for those infected with hepatitis C. So how do you get tested for hepatitis C? Just like many other diseases, a blood test is conducted. Lab technicians will look for antibodies against the hepatitis C virus to see if an individual has been infected before or is currently infected. Antibodies are proteins that help fight off the infection. Now, let's take a look at the symptoms that are caused as a result of HCV. In general, most of them mimic flu-like symptoms. So what exactly are these symptoms? Firstly, Feeling very tired or exhausted is common. The body constantly feels tired because it is fighting off an infection that will not go away. Most people infected with HCV suffer from it as a chronic condition as mentioned earlier. You can also experience sore muscles and joint pain due to the inflammation of the liver. When the virus replicates, its genetic material constantly changes or mutates. 
This can lead to new strains of the virus, which allows for the inflammation in the liver to move on to joints and muscles, causing them to either be sore or painful. Similarly, fevers can occur as a result of the body trying to continuously fight off the infectious agents of the virus. Nausea, poor appetite, and stomach pain are also symptoms of HCV. The inflammation of the liver caused by the virus decreases the production of bile. As mentioned earlier, bile helps with the digestion and breaking down of food into fatty acids. Therefore, the decrease in bile can cause nausea, poor appetite, and stomach pain. In addition, you can experience itchy skin due to the inability of your liver to effectively remove toxins. The toxins continuously accumulate in your bloodstream and cause itchy skin and yellow discoloration. Finally, dark urine is another important symptom. HCV causes dark urine because the disorder of the liver causes an increase in bilirubin levels, which is a protein in charge of breaking down red blood cells. When you have high levels of bilirubin, more red blood cells are broken down than usual, which leads to a darker color in your urine. If you experience any of these symptoms, don't panic. There are certain treatments in place. Doctors can prescribe antiviral medications over the span of 12 to 24 weeks to either reduce the effects or clear the virus from your bloodstream. These medications include ribavirin, also known as RBV, or pegylated interferon, also known as PEG-INF. Both of these antiviral drugs have antiviral characteristics and help with viral inhibition or slow down the replication of HCV in your body. It is important to note that there are no current vaccines available. This is because the virus readily mutates and as a result, it is hard to develop vaccines. Now, let's dive into some statistics regarding hepatitis C. On a global scale, there are an estimated 71 million people living with chronic hepatitis C. 250,000 Canadians are reported to have HCV. 75% of these Canadians live with it as a chronic condition, whereas 25% spontaneously cleared their infections through their immune system. Roughly, 95% of cases in Canada are or can be cured. Globally, the rate of deaths caused by hepatitis C has decreased from 4.13 to 3.72 individuals per 100,000 from 2017 to 2018 respectively. This shows a very low death rate. To recap, hepatitis C is not considered an extremely lethal virus. While it is prevalent over the world, the disease has a high cure rate. HCV has flu-like symptoms. HCV enters a person's bloodstream and travels through it to infect the liver. Overall, we looked at what hepatitis C is. We also discussed the molecular mechanisms that cause hepatitis C in a simplistic way. We discussed the symptoms of hepatitis C along with possible treatments to the virus. We looked at ways to get tested to see if an individual has the virus and also went over some statistics of hepatitis C in Canada and on a global scale. Thank you for watching the video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and share the video if you liked it, and subscribe to the Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel. That's all for now. Thanks and goodbye.